Hey you all, Carpetbagger here, coming to you live from the north, more specifically Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, home of one of the largest battles and most important battles in the Civil War. And there's a lot of uh, Civil War related tourist attractions here in Gettysburg. But since we've stopped off here in Gettysburg, I wanted to check out one of my personal favorite attractions here in Gettysburg. We are at Civil War Tales. And you notice, Tales, T A I L S. Tales, like on an animal, a long extension of their spinal cord. Because here at Civil War Tales, they have some intricate dioramas where they um, recreate some of those famed battles in the Civil War, but with a twist. Instead of human soldiers, the soldiers are all tiny cats. It's a very unique twist on a historic attraction. So please, follow me. Yeah, you look closely there. You can see that's actually a cat there on the back of that horse. And here we are, there's all these different dioramas from different scenes, all parts of the Civil War, and all featuring little cats. Here we have the start of the Civil War, the bombardment of Fort Sumter. You can see all the smoke arising there, little tiny cats marching through there. See the little cats manning the cannon there, their tiny little tails. And even though the models are all cats, but a friendly dog here as well. Hey! There's a battle that occurred in Shelbyville, Tennessee at the Duck River. You can see the uh, battle there amongst all the cats. You can see them actually going over the edge here of the river. There's a horse flying through the air there and landing down in the water. Looks like there's one horse here, this Union horse and soldier did not make it. There are some iron sides, of course, Civil War battleships. Very fascinating, kind of almost like steampunk technology. You see they got the side open so you can see all the Little cats working there inside the ironclad. Another ship here. You can see the cats in the turret. The turret here actually moves. You can actually look through these holes here and see the ironclads underwater. There's a prison camp that's in Andersonville, Georgia. This would be a Confederate owned camp. They keep Union cats prisoner. You can see there's marching Union soldiers in to be prisoners. There's a pile of corpses right there. As we look at the rough uh, situations here in the camp, it looks like that's a big brawl breaking out right there. And then uh, maybe it's a little campfire right there. And there's just so much tiny detail what's going on in the encampment but look at there you can see there's a little light poking out right there and down here we can see the cats actually escaping through a tunnel that they burrowed through the prison camp it's an homage to the old uh, museum cat kitty vera brown she uh, lived here at the museum and died in 2020 at the age of 21. And here you can see some of the models up close. Little Confederate soldier on a horse. Here's a Confederate cat with a Southern Bell cat. Little soldier there holding the Confederate flag. 
then here is a little cat facing off directly against death. Here's some tinier tableaus here. This is Mary Ann Bickerdyke, who's a nurse, uh, worked with soldiers during the Civil War. This is Lieutenant Henry Bonebreak, apparently single-handedly charged the flag bearer holding a better flag and single-handedly wrestled it from him, gaining control of the battlefield. Here we have General Winfield S. Hancock. This is George Armstrong Custer right there. So the cat's there trying to get that uh, carriage there out of the water. Now this diorama here is still under construction. You can see some of the the uh, tools and art crafts used to create the dioramas here. You can see as it takes form gradually. You can see how intricate that is, how many little tiny cats are there. There's a tree line there, how, uh, how tightly they're packed. Yeah, the whole circle, whole big circle of Union cat soldiers. Here is General Meade's headquarters. It's like a farmhouse is being used by uh, Union generals and then the Confederates shot it down with cannonballs. You can see all the carnage, all the horses and soldiers have been killed by the cannon fire. The explosion there, it's even ruined the garden. Pickett's charge here. You can see here we got the Confederates lined up, the Union soldiers back there charging towards each other. In the back here, all the strewn bodies and rifles, all the carnage that is war, all the hats. You can see the rebels there charging forward. Union soldiers all lined up neatly. The Union cats coming through the woods here. Different flags. They face face down with each other. You can see all the smoke from the rifles. A pile of bodies forming there in the middle. These are some of the earlier dioramas. There's Stonewall Jackson right there. Some important figures. You can see Ulysses Grant in the middle. Robert E. Lee over there to the left, and then Abraham Lincoln, or Abercat Lincoln, if you will. The Civil War ambulance. You can see that larger cat soldier there. You see them there marching one by one. Their battle flag in the Union. These cats there lined up really closely. There's Lieutenant Alonzo Cushing. It does not look like things ended well for him. There's John Singleton Mosby. One of the, one of the most feared Confederate raiders. There's a Confederate ball. You can see the soldiers dancing with their ladies. There's a Union ball with the Union soldiers dancing with their wives and girlfriends. This here talks about how Sekigara, Japan, is sister cities with Gettysburg, Pennsylvania, said that they had a very similar type battle in their city. And here's an homage to uh, Sekigara, Japan. They have some of the samurais and soldiers involved in that conflict in the uh, Civil War tales form little cat samurai there. Some origami there as well. Yeah, these cat samurais very very detailed. Look at the, look at how he is designed. This is this cat here, private cat mole reed was uh, went with the owners of the museum on a tour of Japan representing uh, the museum here so this cat uh, went and traveled Japan. Here we have Trossel farm. This is a location in Gettysburg. 
This is the assault on Battery Wagner that occurred on Morris Island off the coast of Charleston. As you can see there, these were uh, actually black soldiers that were sent to attack this Confederate fort. You can see the Confederate cats there at the top. This was actually, there was actually a, a movie based on this attack. It was um, called Glory, where the, uh, the group of black soldiers was trained for uh, this attack. See the Confederate encampment there. Some horses crossing the river. This is another skirmish that occurred in Gettysburg. You can see they actually use the larger style of cats here. You can see I guess these are these three rows are all Confederates. And then you have the Union right here. They're clashing here in the middle where you can see them engaging in hand-to-hand -hand combat with their swords, trying to break through the other line. Very intense stuff. This is the USS Housatanic here. Just a big ship, big uh, Union ship. See all the little soldiers up there in the crow's nest. See, this is a diorama. There's a photo being taken. You see the photographer there. You can see the cat soldiers. There's actually a very famous picture of uh, Union soldiers laying around like that. There's the, there's the actual photo that was taken. Driving here through the actual battlefield. You can see out there, there is different monuments and whatnot out there in the field. We stopped off here in uh, Ortana, Pennsylvania. This is right outside of Gettysburg. So I wanted to visit Mr. Ed's Elephant Museum. This is a, it's also a candy shop, but the owner of the candy shop, Ed, was a massive collector of elephants, elephant statues, anything that has to do with elephants. He had a f very strong fondness for the elephant. You can see him sitting there on a bench, hugging an elephant. Now, sadly, Ed did pass away last year, but his legacy still lives on here at the Elephant Museum. These statues here. This is the Alabama mascot. I think it's the Alabama elephants or something. And look at this. This is Miss Ellie, the animatronic elephant. See her flapping her ears and blinking her eyes. Look at that. She's blinking that one eye. So I guess she's technically she's winking at us. Now Miss Ellie. Oh, look at her purple toenails. What a wonderful creature. I went nuts at Mr. Ed's Elephant Emporium. And look at there. I have completely gone nuts. Before we go inside, we can stroll the woods and gardens here at Mr. Ed's. No relation to the talking horse, of course. See the massive elephant here outside of the pond. It says giraffe garden here, so I guess they have a few giraffes to help keep the elephants company. It says here, Miss Pat's Teapot Museum. The building has both a handle and a spout on it. And I did peek in the window. There are actually teapots in there, but looks like it's currently locked. The sign says, where is the enchanted forest? says that there was a forest here that you could walk through, but it said the trees became diseased and had to be felled in the winter of 2019, 2020. Because they're in the process of creating a new magical space. So uh, yeah, I'll have to come back and check out when they grow the new enchanted forest. And without the enchanted forest, Bigfoot has nowhere to hide. Uh, 
on this tree it says hi ho I do notice a sneezing dwarf there in the bushes oh yeah it looks like we've got dwarves probably around six to eight of them one's got glasses there Oh, who's this? Oh, yeah. It's Miss uh, Snow White herself, lover of dwarves. It's a wonderful old kid's elephant ride there. And oh, wow, look at this. This giant elephant here in the middle of the candy shop. There's just buckets and buckets of candy amongst the elephants. I like this quote. P.T. Barnum says, when entertaining the public, it's best to have an elephant. This here looks like it's a room dedicated to Pez. You can see all the Pez dispensers on display here. I've not seen this many Pez dispensers since I visited the Pez Museum. And since we are so close to Gettysburg, they are obligated to have a Civil War section where you can buy your hat of choice, either Confederate Union or Lincoln. Gettysburg. Get some Lincoln socks, but my favorite souvenir here in Gettysburg is the Abraham Lincoln beard. Just buy the beard in a bag. Noticed up here, there's an elephant bursting from the wall. If we walk to the other side of the wall here, you can see the other end of the elephant bursting from the wall. And here we enter the actual proper elephant museum. Here we have Mr. Ed. He's in the kind of a soft mold form, kind of like a giant cabbage patch doll version of Mr. Ed, next to Ronnie the Wicker Elephant. As you see here, just a complete elephant overload. Elephants of every size and shape imaginable. There's candles, salt and pepper shakers, figurines, just everything that you can really put in the shape of an elephant. Some famous elephants as well, such as Dumbo. That looks like an elephant made out of tiny little shells. Oh, up there we have Babar, king of the elephants. Looking up here we have an elephant chair. I don't know if that's a potty chair or just a regular chair. There's a little elephant there wearing a t-shirt. I think this is a bank here where you put a penny into the nose and it runs down into the belly. No idea what this is. It's like got a shower cap on it and a tube. What is this? Obviously it does something to your head. I'm just not sure what. So many elephants. Down there they have a Barnum and Bailey Circus elephant. We have a weird orange bug-eyed elephant. Then of course the pink elephant, often representative of drunkenness. There's elephant facts mixed in. Mr. Ed's pachyderm points. Female elephants lives in groups, about 15, all related and led by a matriarch. Over here, these elephants have a lifespan of up to 70 years in the wild, so not too far behind humans. This one's very interesting here. It's like a homemade craft elephant out of a big foam ball. Love these little felt elephants here in the boat. And then uh, little plastic snow globe. Don't we love those plastic snow globes? I don't know what that is. That might be some elephant perfume. It makes you smell like an elephant. And then this one kind of looks like a pig to me. Some various elephant cookie jars. Oh, look at that crazy elephant there smoking the corn cob pipe. This elephant lady with the popcorn there. Now here is Mr. Ed's first elephant. I guess this is the elephant that created this whole entire collection. And there we have a giant elephant tooth right there. This is one of the strangest uh, sculptures here at the Elephant Museum. It's like a head with three elephants bursting out of the skull. Weird. This is a silverware is from Lana Turner's estate. Who is Lana Turner and what does she have to do with elephants? You can see that sad little elephant with the puppy dog eyes there. 
And up there, that's some sort of like elephant built out of like little blocks. What are those, what are those blocks called? Ooh, like that orange fuzzy bobble-headed elephant there. It's like an old souvenir from the Ringling Brothers and Barnum Bailey Circus. They'd hand out stuff like that in between acts. There's some elephant tusks, but it says that these tusks came from an elephant that died naturally, so there's not any legal ivory in here. Here's some Republican memorabilia, of course. Elephants, the symbol of uh, the Republican Party. I'm not entirely sure. I know Mr. Ed may have been a Republican, maybe not. Maybe he just appreciated the elephant mascot. But uh, I guess that's no one's business. But uh, just a lover of fine elephants. It's always been an interesting, uh, interesting mascot for the party. What's in this box right here? Oh, jeez. Oh. oh my goodness. There's an elephant chair and uh, a Santa Claus chair. I'm not sure what Santa Claus has to do with elephants, but uh, you know, Santa Claus fits in everywhere. So, you know, I'm glad he's here. Now, I remember learning this fact when I was a kid out of old zoo books that African elephants have large ears shaped like Africa. And Asian elephants have ears that are shaped like India. So it's a really easy way to uh, tell them apart. Here's some elephant themed vodka. But it's actually spelled Oliphant. I don't know if that's, it says it's from Holland. So I don't know if that's the way they say it in Holland. Here's a bicentennial elephant made out of old pipe cleaners. Now the elephant museum was actually destroyed by a fire in 2010 and then rebuilt. This mosaic here is built of all different elephants that were destroyed in the uh, original fire, little bits and pieces to create this new elephant mosaic. Here in the nut section of the candy shop, they have this unbelievable Mr. Peanut costume. It says this is from the 1930s. It's an amazing costume. It'd be, be awfully uncomfortable to put yourself in that costume, but it is amazing. So thank you for joining me here today in the Gettysburg, Pennsylvania area as we check out two of my personal favorite roadside attractions here in the Gettysburg area. The Civil War Tales, where miniature cats reenact the Civil War and Mr. Ed's Elephant Museum, a loving tribute to all things elephant related. Uh, if you would like to subscribe to my channel, it would let you know when new videos come out. I try to put out videos almost daily. I do take days off here and there. If you'd like to uh, support the channel further, consider uh, donating to Patreon. $3 or more will get you a postcard once a month from me to you. Also, if you like enamel pins, we have four different styles of enamel pins in the Etsy shop. All that helps keep this train in the tracks this ironclad in the water, and this flying elephant in the air. Until next time, my friends, this one's in the bag.